Recently, I played through Starfield with the help of some friends to keep me from uninstalling the game immediately because everyone knows I love Bethesda RPGs just as much as I love telling the truth and speaking slowly. The following is a completely accurate summary of the campaign, at least until I gave up on it. Trust me. The game begins on an elevator, and I hope you weren't ready to get going right away because this goes on for two minutes, followed by three and a half minutes of walking to introduce you to the mining mechanics because every game is required to have survival crafting elements in it even if everyone agrees this is a waste of time. We halo TV show and artifact and witness some zooming out, and I hope you like that cutscene because if you play this game through to completion you have to watch it two dozen more times, and no, I'm not kidding. And now it's time for the character creation part of this game, where you can design something that vaguely resembles what someone who was tasked with designing a human might think someone looks like without checking a reference. After picking our names and double-checking that our pronouns exist, because can you imagine how annoying these summaries would be if Willyasso referred to Willyasso specifically every time in lieu of a pronoun? It would be pretty fucking annoying. We go outside and make some friends and check if the fire burns, and it does not. So we stand around for a little bit until some pirates show up and we beg them to take us away from this boring intro section, but they're only interested in being dicks, so we murder them and get dragged into the main quest line in the least interesting way possible. Captain Fuck, I'll you as best It doesn't know that my name is Captain Just Fuck You Shepherd, but yeah. Captain Fuck is close enough. <laughs> we watch a cutscene and go to space to sit through a tutorial until we're allowed to use the fast travel function because there's no seamless space travel in this game because that'd be too hard for a AAA company to create. It's not like there are games that did that on a much smaller budget nearly a decade ago. After arriving at an outpost, we hack some people into pieces because this game's AI is such a fucking joke that they don't even try to avoid you while you smack at them with all the grace of a wacky, waving, inflatable, arm-flailing tube man. And now it's time for this game's version of lockpicking that Bethesda has gone out of their way to make somehow worse than the previous iterations because they just can't let go of making this into a stupid fucking minigame that halts all the momentum of the gameplay because pacing is for suckers. Our game takes 100 hours to beat because you're going to be spending so much time of it scrolling through TikTok instead of paying attention because it's so fucking boring. It's been 45 minutes and I'm having a blast, can't you tell? We go outside and meet Brogan, whom we kill with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Oh god. <laughs> did, I, did I join at a bad time? What the hell? You joined and I exploded. <laughs> but then decide that we want to try and convince him to fuck off and we're introduced to this wonderful persuasion minigame. As long as your definition of wonderful means incomprehensible and clunky. You have to pick between a set of options to try and convince the NPC, and there's levels of difficulty for each option. You only have a certain amount of tries to convince them, and it's completely random whether or not the option you pick actually works regardless of the difficulty level. The game doesn't actually tell you the odds besides a color, so it's all completely arbitrary and a big waste of my fucking time. After cutscening our way to the next area, we meet the constant pain in my ass, a group of goody two-shoes who gives a fucks who want us to find more space cutscenes for who cares why, and now we're stuck with Sarah, who will disagree with literally every decision we make from here on, but will never leave no matter how despicable our crime spree gets. <laughs> what? Ah, fuck, the potted plant strategy. Well, you will never win. Well, what? Stop! You see security. You're under arrest. This is not, this is not me doing anything with the camera, this is just the camera. You're being transferred to the UC Vigilance. You'll find out more when you Oh my god. Other than that, I'm not- You're getting this quest line already. Okay. I'm ready, let's go. Stand by to be transferred. What's going on? Instead of getting arrested, we're sent to a ship for a side mission that I stupidly agreed to participate in, so we spend the next 15 minutes getting talked at by NPCs in order to get on with this fucking mission that we could have actually just ignored, but poor naive Willy also thought that the quest line where we go undercover with some pirates would actually be fun. Spoilers, it was not. I'm going to betray every single one of you! <laughs> We cutscene to Mars, which you can tell because it's orange, and the game gives us the illusion of choice because our real options here are either pay a thousand credits or stop the quest line in its tracks. If only there was some kind of alternative option where I could have gotten the information without paying. Say, through an alternate dialogue tree, like you can in every role-playing game ever made. We talk to another who gives a shit and do his mini quest because it's our only option, so he'll tell us where to cutscene ourselves to next. And then we struggle to figure out what the hail button is for a little bit because I decided I didn't want to listen to NPCs talk at me some more because interacting with people in this game is like agreeing to spend Thanksgiving with your mother-in-law, which is a joke I'm sure my audience definitely relates to because you're all married, right? You're definitely not like 20 and single living with your parents because rent prices are ridiculous and your job's income isn't enough to rent an apartment. But it'll be okay, just a couple more years of psychological torture and then you can try to find a roommate you can live with that at least won't try to kill you in your sleep, even if they live like Oscar the Grouch. Was I doing something? Oh, right, the summary. The pirates want us to kill a guy named Rake, and we fail a minigame to persuade Rake's friends to kill him for us. So we fail a second minigame and then just kill everyone instead because wanton murder is a lot easier than trying to figure out how to resolve a situation peacefully. I mean, that's why the cops do it, right? After ignoring Sarah getting mad at us but also doing nothing about it, we cut scene our way back to the pirates who are under attack because they've got to come up with some excuse to have mandatory space combat every once in a while. So after blowing everything up, they give us the location of their pirate base, and now we're forced to report back to the original quest givers, even though it would definitely make more sense for this to be optional if we decide to, I don't know, roleplay as a deserter who decided to join up with the pirates 
pirates. But no, gotta waste five minutes getting talked at in a conversation that can be boiled down to, please don't kill anyone else, even though we arrested you for mass murder. Now go do more pirate stuff. And now it's time for a huge waste of time in the form of jumping to random systems on the way to the pirate base because my ship can't make the entire journey in one go, except it can as long as I stop a few times. This game is a joke, right? Bethesda made this game bad on purpose specifically to see how hard fanboys would suck their dick for this inferior product, right? Somebody designed this specifically to be as annoying as possible, right? Anyways, after spending six minutes fast traveling to the pirate base, it's time for an open house where we follow an NPC as they show us around the pirate base really fucking slowly because it's only been an hour since we started this quest line and we've done exactly zero pirating. What's another hour of wasted time? And I'm not kidding, we're on this quest line for another hour and do absolutely no pirating whatsoever. We do fucking archaeology. The rest of this is such a fucking waste of time, I'll just throw in some highlights and we'll skip ahead. Why do you have a bomb in your chest? I see the bomb as a symbol of my importance, and it's a constant reminder to everyone of the sacrifice I was willing to make. What? That's just stupid. The <laughs> fuck is this guy talking about? Yes, I do permanently keep an entirely rabid wolf tied to my chest. I see it as a sign of my authority. People take me way more seriously with this entirely rabid wolf tied to my chest with its teeth at my throat. So much respect for the man with an entirely rabid wolf attached to his chest. <laughs> the wolf is named Precious, just a side context. As a sign of passion for my craft, I keep five completely drugged out mercenaries, all, all, all with rage-inducing stimulants, constantly in the room with me with AK-47s. Sometimes I yell at them very loudly just to startle them. I keep a claymore mine on my toilet seat so that every time I uh, lift it up, I just <laughs> explode. And, and if I manage to survive that, I have a bouncing Betty in my bidet, so when I go to clean my ass out, I might be killed by that one too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking gauntlet getting out of my bathroom. Alright, I, I have to see if this guy explodes when I kill him. Oh, you can't kill him? Really? He's an important fucking NPC and you can't kill him. They're still doing this? I, I, I'm surprised you guys don't do what I do. Uh, when I open my fridge, I keep the devil's core in there. And sometimes if I just, you know, open it a little too intensely, I get fucking like just cooked alive. <laughs> Suddenly, skin cancer just all up and down my body. Just, just, now I have lymphoma. I just needed a Pepsi. Damn it. Just get on with it. Sounds like someone wants to get down the <laughs> Yes, please. Anything okay. but this. Enough discussion. We have got a lot of work to do. To that end, he says like, enough discussion and then continues talking. I like Mathis's beard is clearly fake. Like he's clearly wearing a fake beard. I love how the other two just don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah, they don't They're like, care. Finally, I can hate this guy. I feel like this whole game could have been more interesting if they just cut half the. <laughs> if it wasn't a Bethesda game. Yeah, if, it was, if they cut half the Bethesda bullshit and just let you play the game. Play an open world game where you can make any decision you choose. What if I shoot this guy? No, fuck, that's not what we wanted. Damn it. We used this opportunity to take out Delgado. Whoa, whoa, hang on. G g give me a second to explain. Now, let's find a way out of here. Wait, so he suggests we should betray the guy and I don't have the option of murdering him here and now? You're joking. So I can't, I can't kill him for suggesting betrayal? That's so fucking stupid. If we have an option to kill Mathis, I'm fucking taking it. All right, I'm back. What did I miss? Mathis said he's gonna, he's getting cut from the fleet, so he's gonna make his own fleet. And I'm just going to kill him here. <laughs> <gasps> he has a health bar. Yeah. Oh, but everyone's pissed at you now. Why is everybody pissed at me if he's leaving? EVE Online is cool until you have to do literally anything at all in it. And then it's a spreadsheet simulator. EVE Online is such a big fucking nerd game. <laughs> that when they announced that there was Excel, like, spreadsheet collaboration with EVE Online, it got a standing ovation. And I'm not joking. Already getting lost. Uh, there we go. Yeah, if only you had a map. Oh yeah, I've heard the local map is, like, really, really bad. Oh, it's terrible. Where is the local map? I don't even know how to open it. Uh, service map, G. Yeah, it's not, it's because I'm not on a surface. So there's no local map when you're on a spaceship. <laughs> oh, it's not like this is randomly generated either. And there are plenty of games I've played where randomly generated locations have maps. 
This game came out just a couple days ago. This is ridiculous. If we go to New Atlantis, you can summon it. What the fuck? Nice. How long has it been? <laughs> it says 12 minutes since I started the stream, but that's not even how long I've been playing. We head back to Commander Eye Candy, and after five more minutes of being talked out, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. We decide to abandon the side mission because I shouldn't have bothered in the first place. What the fuck? So we're back off to the main mission, which is to uh, collect more of those stupid metal things that make us watch a cutscene. Hooray. After talking to a guy with really stupid facial hair, we head to Mars and talk to the world's least helpful bartender, who we actually managed to persuade to give us information with the Persuasion minigame, which is the first and only time this actually works. We cutscene our way to Venus and get a pop-up tutorial about ship stealth, so we ignore it and bum rush a beacon and get killed. So we crawl towards the beacon for two and a half minutes, only to find out that the guy we're looking for is probably on a space station orbiting the moon. So we cutscene our way there and kill the surprisingly high amount of people living here, despite it being abandoned for years. Turns out the guy we're looking for is on Neptune, so we cutscene our way into a fight because it turns out that the mercenaries took hold of his ship, so we disable and kill everyone on board except for the guy we came to see because he's an important NPC. Hooray. Now it's time to cutscene our way back to the constant pain in my ass, where we try to murder Sarah so she congratulates us on our good work and welcomes us as a permanent member of the constant pain in my ass because you're forced to join whether you want to or not. Then we tell Sarah to finally fuck off, which is a short-lived reprieve because now we've got to get Dave Filoni stuck to us for his quest line, and he's just as much of a boring goody two-shoes as Sarah was because the writers googled how to make a cowboy lame. We meet the adoring fan who is actually the best character in this game because he's the embodiment of the goal of every YouTuber, to have a loud, annoying fan base that will always side with them regardless of any controversy no matter how bad it is. I could destroy an orphanage and he'd commend me for lowering the cost of the property in the area. Then for everyone else, I just gotta get out my ukulele. Now we're off to Firefly World, where Dave Filoni lets us know that he's actually pretty famous and that the thing we're looking for is in the local bank. But it turns out that the bank is locked down due to a hostage crisis, so we decide to solve the situation ourselves by breaking into the bank. But actually you can't do that, so we check the roof for a skylight to sneak in, but there isn't one. So we try to pickpocket the mayor for the key to the bank, but we don't have the pickpocketing skill because that's an upgrade. Which leaves us the only option of doing the mission in the singular exact way they want us to, because it's not like this is a role-playing game, right? I wouldn't want to try to approach the solution in my own way, right? Well that's okay, when I get into the bank I'll just shoot every when I see and then let everyone outside know that I couldn't save the hostages. Just kidding, all the hostages are marked as important NPCs and can't be killed and everyone outside automatically knows that I tried to kill them so they're hostile now. The marshal will still talk to me though. The hostages, are they safe? The hostages are safe. <laughs> of course, course they, they are, are. It's, me. it's me! Well, I've got no cause to doubt you as long as you get results. Here, Where you go, buddy? You've more than earned this. You got no, we haven't. A spot. You did it with courage. It's not common. As a matter of fact, you the fuck might is just happening? be freestyling. He's trying to run, but he's stuck in the conversation. <laughs> Head on over to the <laughs> Turns out the thing we're looking for isn't in the bank vault because it was stolen by Dave Filoni's brother. So we meet up with him and shoot him, but he's an important NPC too, so he can't be killed either. After his brother miraculously recovers from being shot with radioactive bullets, we hatch a plan to distract him so I can steal the map we're looking for by breaking into the room that he's standing right in front of, which means more lockpicking minigame. We steal the map and shoot the brother again, and it turns out the next step is right smack dab in the middle of gang territory, which means we've got to shoot our way in with absolutely no problems whatsoever. <laughs> Ah, right, toggle god mode. We touch another artifact and get another stupid cutscene, and on our way out, we're ambushed by the gang leader who is no match for my cheating. So we deliver the artifact to the constant pain in my ass and shoot everyone, but no one cares. So we dismiss Dave Filoni and then go on a killing spree, which I thought would be cathartic, but it's actually just lame because half the characters in this game are unkillable. The janitor is an important NPC, Are you kidding? After unlocking all the base level abilities in the game, we try to build a ship in the shape of a dong, but it turns out the build controls are fucking impossible to use on PC, and you can't save a design that you're working on, so we just give up on that forever. Next up on the checklist of things I wasn't really paying attention to, we meet Vladimir Russian Man, who sends us off to find Andre the regular sized person and some more artifact cutscenes. We deliver the artifacts and challenge Swim Cap to a competition that he'll never win before going back to Vladimir Russian Man again, who tells us that he found something interesting, which is a lie, but we've gotta go anyways. So we cutscene our way to the middle of nowhere and get lost for a little bit, trying to find out where to go. After finding the temple, we go through an extremely stupid sequence of floating through lights for a long time, which gives us another identical artifact cutscene. Hooray! And after getting back to the lodge, we find out that we've got alien superpowers now, so this is just shouts from Skyrim. This really is just Skyrim in space, huh? And that's the end of the game. It's not actually the end of the game, but that's where I quit because my massive boredom wasn't worth doing this over and over again for the next 15 hours. Video over.
In the log, doing log. I don't, I don't know why I turned into a country singer today. Yeah, I don't know why I feel like doing a deep voice today. It's just like, recently I played through Starfield with the help of some friends, and this is not my normal speaking voice. I've got a stuffy nose, so hopefully that doesn't uh, affect the audio.